Hi, this is video four of the Harmony and Light Quilt Along. If you've been following along, then by now you have a bunch of these triangle blocks, and now it's time to get them into a layout you like and start joining them together. So what I've done with mine is to organize them roughly by color. Because you've got colors sort of mixing, you may have to decide whether you put it in the purple or the red, the red pile. It's not, it's not important to do this um, really precisely, just so that you kind of have the idea of which pile to go to when you know what color you're looking for. Now, if you take a look at the quilt behind me, you see that the colors go through the quilt in diagonal rows. But what we're gonna, how we're gonna piece this quilt is in horizontal rows. So we're not gonna use a whole bunch of one color of block. We're gonna use multiple colors of blocks in the whole row. Maybe we'll be moving between say three or four of the stops on our color progression in the course of one row. And there's no science to this. It's gonna take a little time to get the blocks in the way that you like it. That's part of the fun and the artistry of quilt making. So find a place that you wanna start I'm gonna say maybe with one of my orange or blocks. Now you'll wanna to refer to the diagram in the pattern to make sure that you're getting your blocks oriented the right way throughout the row. There's odd rows and even rows that repeat throughout the quilt. Now this is a situation that I want to avoid. I don't keep the um, two wedges of the same print next to each other. So I'll get something else in there so that they have some space between them. Okay, so you'll see that on the first row, I used more of my orange and then started moving through the color progression. On the next row, I used less of the orange, and so I started moving through earlier. The next row after that is probably not gonna have any orange, maybe just a little red here, and start getting to the purple. So you'll get a feel for it as you do it. And then once you've got your rows set, you can take your right hand blocks and your left hand half blocks and start to figure out which ones you want where to fill in the spaces. Once you have a layout you like, then we'll start sewing them together, one row at a time. Well, now I've got the layout the way I like it, and I wanna talk through how we join these blocks together into a row. Well, let me start by taking the two whole blocks, the first two whole blocks in this row. And what I want you to notice about them is that for these two blocks, the white is joining. All that fussy pressing that we did earlier is gonna be really useful now because the way we've pressed it on this block, the seams are going this way, but on this block, the seams are going this way. So they'll kind of lock together and help us match those points without working too hard for it. So I'm gonna sew that seam. Now, I feel like with these seams nesting together that my pieces hold securely enough that I don't need to use pins, but I'm not trying to stress you out. If you use pins, you go right ahead. This is just how I do it. And now let's press this seam. Because this is one of the times where the blocks are coming with the white joining, we wanna press this different from the others. These seams I'm gonna press the seam open. So just finding a place to get my finger between the seam and moving along it. I usually give it another press from the top. 
and that one's ready. Now let's talk about joining these two. These two don't have the white coming together. So just flop one over the other. You don't have the seams locking them in place. So if this is a place that you want to use pins, go right ahead. So with this type of seam, I'm usually joining starting from the point where those white triangles are pointing towards each other and moving outward. Pressing these two blocks is a little bit different because these ones where the white isn't coming together, I want you to notice that there's already a pattern going on with the seam allowances here. They're all going in this direction. So what I want you to do is just continue that, continue that direction. And so this is how I'm going to work my way down the whole row is just joining these blocks up in pairs and then I'll join the pairs together. Once you've got your blocks joined into pairs, then you can start joining up the pairs. So I'll start back here at the beginning. And what you'll see is that this, the point tip of one triangle often meets up with the seam allowance from the, the seam that you've pressed open. And that can just help you know that you've got your block lined up right. So I'll press again after each seam. And again, looking to see for that seam that I just sewed, are the white ones coming together? If so, that gets pressed open. If they're not white ones coming together, then we're continuing that circular seam allowance. The seams will start to get a little bulky where three of the triangles are starting to point together, but don't let that worry you too much. And here I've got the two white triangles coming together. So that seam gets pressed open. When you've got all your full blocks joined together, go ahead and add your half blocks the same way to the ends. I'm going to keep going on this. And then once I've got some full rows, I'll show you how I join them together. Now I've sewn together several blocks in each row so that I can show you what we do when we go to join the rows. Here's an even row. And here's an odd row. If you've been waiting for me to use pins, we're finally there. I'm going to line up so that my points match and hold everything in place for these long seams. Oh, and let me point out something here. I don't know if you can see, but my piecing didn't end up perfect here. This side ended up a little higher than this side. I think that's within the tolerance for this pattern. Um, I'm a human, you're a human. The quilt's still gonna look pretty good when we're done. So I would just imagine where this line would go if it had to meet up with the next block there. And we'll just imagine that stuff on the outside isn't there and sort of, so it's gonna peek up above the edge and we'll just follow the edge of this top fabric when we go to piece it.
And again, these seams should nest really nicely together wherever the white triangles meet. And we're going to follow the same pattern for pressing this that we did when we were sewing the rows. So any place where the white triangles come together, we'll press open. But then over here, where the tips, the points of the white triangles are pointing at each other, we're going to continue that circular seam pressing pattern. And so you may have to just sort of slightly pull apart a few seam allowances here. It's a little busy in there. Right, it's a little complicated, but you should be able to get them to lay a little flatter with that. So the first block is open. The second block is getting this circular pattern. You can just put your finger down in the middle of it to help it stay flat. And if you're thinking, gosh, this is a lot of seam allowances coming into this one point, you're right. But I'm not going to have you quilt over those areas, so I've got you covered. And then on the end where the half blocks come together, those get pressed open as well. And after you've enjoyed the satisfaction of having a finished quilt top, it'll be time to get it basted and quilted. And quilting is what I'm gonna show you in the next lesson.